a lot of my audience come to me and they say, Michelle, when I grow up, I want to just be like you. What do they mean by that? I'm a very busy person. I work full-time job. It usually takes 12 hours a day. And then I have a full-time coaching business. So a lot of introverted women coaches, they come to me and they're wondering, Michelle, how the heck are you doing this? So today I am going to share my secret tips of how I manage two full-time jobs and still have a life. Stay tuned. One of my top secrets in how to manage two full-time jobs, being able to work 12 hours, three times a week, and still managing a full-time coaching business is that I do a lot of time blocking. And in the past, I have shared this is that I'm a big fan of using planner. I like paper planning. I like digital planning. So if you look at my calendar is fully booked and a lot of it has to do with how you managing and how you time blocking so that you are controlling your time instead of using the time to control you. My audience are female entrepreneur, women coaches, and they're introverted. And a lot of them feel like they're being pulled away and their energy is just drained. By the end of the day, they are completely lost, feeling overwhelmed. They frustrated because their business is not moving. When you really look at how they're managing or using their time, you notice that there's a lot of time waster. But one of the things, the first thing I encourage everyone to do, this is actually work for everyone. If you find yourself sitting home, you're wondering like what I could be a little more productive. But that's a mindset thing. So we won't go into that. But if you're thinking about that, you could use time more, more efficiently. Then one of the things I want you to start looking at is actually take out a journal and start asking yourself, what type of style, what type of planning style do I like to have? Am I someone who's planning on a big picture, annual goal, vision type of person? Or do I like the month to month? Or maybe it's week to week? Or is it I need to plan every single day in order to feel grounded? Now, personally, I have noticed that my way, my style of planning is really a week to week basis. So I would sit down on a Sunday and plan out my upcoming week so that I know exactly where I need to be, what are things that I need to take care of for that upcoming week. So for me, it's a week to week planning system that works the best for me. Now in the past, I have tried daily planning, I have tried monthly planning, and they don't really stick to me as much as the weekly planning where I can have a big picture of what my week look like. So I can open up my calendar and say, oh, so here's a free spot. I'm available to see you right there and then. So that's one way of time blocking and being able to control your schedule before the schedule control you. So if you open up your calendar and you don't have a whole lot of available spots, then perhaps you can put that into a bucket list or a to-do list for later on when you have time, when you finish your current task, then you can bring a new task onto your calendar. So number one is to really identify what type of planning style person are you? Are you a monthly person? Are you a yearly person? Are you a weekly person? Are you a daily person? Once you figure out what your planning style is, then I want you to actually sit down and think about your annual goals. What are your goals that you have, whether it's for your life, or for your business. And because we're talking about coaching business, so I'm going to focus on particularly on your coaching business. What is your annual goals that you want to accomplish by the end of the year? And you don't want to plan the detail just yet. You want to have that overall big picture of where do you want your business to be at? So for example, this year I'm focusing on growing my email list. So that is going to be my top priority goal. So it's always going to be on number one. And then number two is I want to grow my membership area where I can get more members into the membership area and also the course, then that would be my number two goal for the rest of the year. And I'm not a very ambitious person when it comes to having a list of goals. The problem I see that is when you have too many goals, 
you tend to start juggling around and you're trying to get this goal, you're trying to hit that goal. So I want you to think about when you're setting these goals to narrow it down to just a few, no more than six, perhaps the big picture. We're not talking about the details. We don't know how that's going to map out yet. So if you want to hit six figure by the set end of the year, then put down six figure by the end of the year. Worry about how to get there later on. This is not the, the place or the time to figure out the detail just yet. So once I have those top goal, I usually include six of them. And one of my favorite planner, it's called Full Focus Planner by Michael Hyatt. I'll share the link in the description box down below so you can go check it out. Full focus planner in the front of the planner, it has a section where you can list out all your annual goal. And there's a lot of lines that you can fill up your goal, but I don't recommend you go that far because once you've filled out the page with all these goals, it actually is overwhelming for me. I don't know about you, but when I see a huge list of to do, it just overwhelms me. I don't know where to begin. So I typically just list out the top through six that I would like to work on specifically that would move my business to the next level. <clears throat> so that's number two. Look at your big picture annual goal and just give yourself really limited spots. Don't be too ambitious. Don't be going out there and listen all your goal because that would just overwhelm you. Only focus on what would move your business needle right this year. Once you have the big picture goal, then you want to break it down into your monthly to do's and your weekly to do as well as your daily to do. So let's say I'm going to pick growing my email list. So what would be my monthly goal that I want to accomplish by the end of that month? So perhaps I want to grow 200 new subscribers by the end of that month. So I would put down my monthly goal would be to grow 200 subscribers by the end of the month. Then I can break it down into a weekly goal. How many subscribers would, you, would I like to have by the end of the week and then in, by the end of the day? How many people do I need to talk to in order to get that 200 subscriber at the end of the month? Now, speaking of subscribers, if you have not already done so, I would love for you to hit that subscribe and then hit the bell button so that you will get a notification every time I release a new So now video. that we have broken down your annual goal, to a more digestible monthly, weekly, and daily. Then we can talk about how you plan this, whether it's a digital system or a paper planning system, if you are like me who enjoy paper planning. So the way I like to do it is I always look at my top three things that I need to accomplish in order to accomplish that goal I have for that day. And you, you may end up having different priorities. So let's say growing 200 subscriber is my top priority for that month. And my day is I need to talk to five people this week or posting on the social media about my free lead magnet in order to get to that two subscriber every single day. Then I need to figure out how do I break that down further into planning my social media post. So I will look at my weekly calendar. Again, I think weekly. So I will look at my weekly calendar and look at planning ahead in terms of which day would I like to promote my newsletter or a free lead magnet so that I can get those subscribers. And what do I need to do in order to bring my followers and get their attention so that they are aware that I have a free lead magnet today and this is going to spark their interest in wanting to download it. So all the content that I'm going to create for that particular week will lead to a focus goal for that particular month. So that's say 20 subscribers that I want to grow for that particular week, then I'm going to create content that would help me to bring my followers closer to me so that they will want to download my free lead magnet, which ultimately will 
result in my two subscriber per day. Everything that you hear and is going to be very intentional, and it's all tied together in the way that I plan my content for that week, for that day, and also for that month, which ultimately will bring me to my annual. I hope you find this video helpful. Let me know if you want me to share my calendar, my content calendar with you so that you can visually see how this is done. Comment down below and let me know if you want me to do that video. Thank you.